Some rules are made to be broken. For years, J.P. Harrington has used that fact as a North Star throughout his standout career in the golf equipment industry. From small town Wisconsin to the far east of Japan, golf has taken J.P. around the world, and at every stop, the master craftsman continues to hone his talents. Now firmly established in California, just minutes from Torrey Pines, J.P. is singularly focused on sharing his creative designs with golfers, breaking expectations, and setting new standards. And with that, we are joined by J.P. Harrington himself, JP, how are you doing today? Doing well, doing well. Thanks for having me on. It's great to be with you. Uh, so JP, let's just jump right into it. Um, when you think about designing a wedge, um, as, as kind of a layman, I, I know very little about it, but I understand that it takes kind of a combination of kind of both sides of the brain. You know, you need to be somewhat of an artist, somewhat of an engineer, kind of at every stage of the process. If you were to describe yourself, would you say you're more, more of an artist or kind of an engineer? Well, you know, in wedge design, for the way I go about it is I always go with performance first. So we need to achieve the performance we're looking at. Um, but being an artist, naturally, I'm always paying attention to um, combining those engineering properties as well, you know, geometries and things like that that affect performance and how can they look good. So it's kind of a dual path a bit. I always have that in my in my mind of of what could be you know, aesthetically pleasing at the end of the day, but it really boils down to performance. And we wanna get, you know, uh, for example, turf interaction. We wanna get the most efficient turf interaction out there uh, with the sole design. Um, and then we wanna optimize that turf interaction with the center of gravity or enhancing that sweet spot, so to speak. So we have the most efficient energy transfer uh, to the ball at impact. And so we want to establish those performance variables first. And then um, as an artist, you want to hold those value, those values constant while you design something that, is, that looks good and holds those performance characteristics fixed. Right, Larry, when JP talks about kind of leading with performance and, and, and kind of cleaning up the design, maybe a bit farther down the line, does that kind of track with, with kind of your experience and, and kind of form or sort of function before form? Yeah, you know, I really think uh, when you talk about wedges, it's, you know, it's kind of what your influences are, who you kind of worked with, who you talk. You know, I, I spent, you know, my early career at Wilson. So if you, you know, you take a look at the wedge that I do, there's a lot of Wilson influence, you know, a little bit bigger shape, you know, kind of symmetrical toe. You look at JP's, JP's are maybe a little bit more modern design, a little bit more um, you know aesthetically a little bit rounder than than mine tend to be but that's a great thing because everybody has a different eye every golfer looks at it a little differently you know one of the things that that impresses me and always has about JP wedges is you know hey shapes important but when it really comes down to a wedge especially a sand wedge and a lob wedge it's 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 the it's the soul you know, it's the bounce. It's how it's going to perform. You know, I played golf this morning, and let me tell you something. I, there's a couple of guys that could have used your wedge this morning, JP. Not me, but a couple, a couple, of, guys, couple of guys. They could have used the high bounce 60 for sure today. Yeah, 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 that's that's all great. And that's to touch your, on your point about, you know, where you learn some of these things. Well, um, if you notice, I do a lot of real aggressive heel-toe uh, grinds. You know, I really remove that excess baggage on the toe and the heel. Um, and when I was so starting out with hot sticks golf in Scottsdale, Arizona, in my early days, and then that's where I really learned my first time really grinding and things like that. They were modifying existing manufacturers golf clubs, and they were really putting a real aggressive heel toe grind on there. And then the tungsten inserts to, um, to get that weight back that you lost through grinding. And so, you know, those when I was learning early, early on, uh, I, you know, I've kept a lot of those influences um, during my, my early days as well. So it does speak to, you know, where you come from, how you start and, and, and those influences that you have. Yeah. And I think too, you know, you, you can look back. I, I mean, I look back on some of my early things that I did back at Wilson back in the eighties and it's like, holy cow, it, it wasn't all that, wasn't all that good. <laughs> you know, and, and you, you know, and you kind of morph in yours the same way, you know, you've, you've learned through trial and error, 
working with players, talking with players. Hey, what what's better? What's gonna what's gonna make it better? What's gonna make the performance better? And it really, you know, anybody who anybody who's making anything good for golfers, you're gonna adjust through the trial and error process. Right. You know, and, and it's funny, Larry, you bring up process. I, I want to ask you about that, JP. Seeing as, I mean, you've been in this business for, for well over a decade now. I'm curious, what part of that process, when you're designing a new wedge, say, or you're, you're kind of beginning that process from, from the very start, what, what part of that is the most rewarding to you? Is it, you know, when you're, when you're scribbling a design, at, you know, on a restaurant napkin, or, or when you're in the, in the shop grinding, or when you're actually maybe hitting your first shots with it? What is kind of the most satisfying part of the process for you? Well, I definitely think it starts uh, on the on the grinding wheel too, and having that you know blank canvas, so to speak, to sculpt something that's in your mind, and you can get it out physically on the wheel. Um, I think that's you know that's a great start because then you know you can start with the heel toe grind, um, and then you know ultimately the, the different uh, elements of sole width, bounce angle, and camber to create that sole that. Um, you can then test out where you think it might do something. We can grind a prototype, go in real life, get some player testing done, analyze those results, and then ultimately go back on the grinding wheel, make a new prototype um, based upon that feedback and going back and forth that way has been a, a really good process for me um, in terms of you know the important steps to start on designing a new wedge. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. I think, you know, just kind of Taking it back, was there a specific moment, uh, kind of maybe maybe you were in high school, maybe later, that you realized I, I need to make my career in golf? Was there a time where it just clicked that, that you knew that this is what you wanted to do for for the rest of your life? Yeah, well, you know, it started off a little bit, you know, as went to college at St. Cloud State University in Minnesota there, and after two years, you got to declare a major. Didn't really know what I wanted to do. Knew I loved golf. I was in a business program. I found the professional golf management uh, program at Arizona State, so I transferred, and that really kicked me off. But I do remember driving down there and, and saying, you know, I, I want to get into the golf industry. I love golf. I was always one of those kids that loved equipment. And I thought, I remember saying, well, well, Ping's out, out in Arizona. It would be really cool to get in the equipment golf side of, of use PGM to get into the equipment side. And I didn't really know how that would take. And then fortunately for me, I found Hot Sticks Golf and the, the rise of custom club fitting. And I, I was able to do my internships there. So, so that was, you know, for me, an entry into the equipment side. And then it allowed me to really to focus, focus on that. Yeah, that makes that's uh, that's a really cool kind of origin story for your career. When I think about, um, obviously, you got into this game partially because because you love it. I think that's a big kind of common thread of, of everyone in golf is on some level. I feel like uh, we all we all share a similar level of passion for the game. Do you feel like as you've gotten into kind of the business of golf, has it been difficult to kind of maintain that that passion for the game? I know I uh, a Golf Digest article written by Shane Ryan just came out recently talking about how. Um, there's a real epidemic among club professionals in America and how kind of the, the work-life imbalance has kind of uh, drained a lot of their passion for the game. Has it been difficult for you to kind of, kind of maintain that same kind of childlike love for the sport um, as you've kind of dived into the business side of it? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a bit of a double-edged sword there. Um, you know, you don't get to go out, well, you could. I don't play a ton, as much golf as one, you know, as I would like, or one may think. Um, I, we were talking, you know, before we went on here, uh, I haven't I haven't swung much of a, a golf club since January. That's just because I had to, you know, I've been in the in the shop grinding and, and getting, the, getting the wedges out. And so some of those things take, you know, there's priorities there. Um, so, yeah, you know, and, and, you know, you're working on looking at golf clubs all day long. And sometimes when you're, when you're done on the weekend or at night, the last thing you want to do is look at another golf club. You need to get a little <laughs> release. So that, there's a bit of a, a balance there that, that can be detrimental to, to you know, the getting out there and playing and, and maintaining that passion. But at the same time, you know, a lot of my passion lies with, with creating uh, new products and, 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 modifying the existing products to create something unique and so that's a big passion that drives me within the golf industry uh, is that equipment side so then i can get that feedback and those testimonials of the players 
uh, hitting the product and, and really enjoying it. So that's for me, that's, you know, what I take away um, for golf in this day and age. Well, you know, and I think I'm a little bit older than you are, JP, but, you know, you have those moments. You know, I did the Tee to Green radio show Saturday morning and came home from, came home from work and, and my neighbor was outside working on his lawn and he goes, hey, I heard you on the radio, you know? He goes, I didn't realize you were such a, such a big guy in the golf industry. You know, but you do that, you know, you're, you're sitting at dinner, or you're, you know, you're having a drink somewhere and somebody walks up to you and goes, hey, you know, I really like the club you made or I really, you know, you did a great fitting or what, you know, and it's just all of a sudden when you just feel like you want to just not care about it anymore, that happens and all of a sudden it just gets you excited, gets you excited about it again. So, um, yeah, you know, that's just, you know, I think that's, that's always the driving force and, you know, you, you can look. You know, you look at JP's wedges, and, and you know they're 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 as pretty as anything there is, and they perform beautifully. So it, it I mean it's you can see that you can see the passion for what exactly. he does in the product. You know it's not you know every little detail is taken care of. I mean if you you just it's there. It's exactly. It's it's just there. I, I totally agree, Larry. I think, you know, that's one of the coolest things about your wedges, JP, is that if you see it, if you see maybe a picture of it with someone in their fall through, you know it's a JP wedge. There's, yeah, there's no mistaking that. Um, when we talk about kind of, you know, the, the positive moments from your career, you know, golf, one of the cool things about golf is it, it takes people so many different places and it introduces them to, to so many different uh, cool people. Is there, is there a particular moment that stands out to you in your career where you just stopped and, and had to sort of pinch yourself and just say, is this... Is this really what I do for a living? Was there is there anything that kind of sticks out to you when you when you think back? Yeah, well, you know, and, and as you're building your career, especially in the early start, where you're kind of, you know, you're you're going on all, all passion and your heart's telling you to go down this this path, and and then when you ultimately do it, um, oppor- you know, and some opportunities are uh, can arise. I remember I was invited early on. Oh, it was probably in 2000. Uh, 11 or something like that, um, where I, I was invited to go do a, a clinic or a seminar out in um, New Jersey at Hamilton Farms with some top 100 instructors. And here I am, you know, the, this really green uh, wedge grinder out of his garage going to, um, you know, Stan Utley was there, Jerry King, Mike Adams. Um, and it was a, it was one of those, I'm, I'm uh, speaking, you know, I'm supposed to give these, you know, speeches about the the wedges and things and i'm standing right next to the the greats in the in the industry from a, a teaching perspective and and that was one of those moments of well you know how do i how do i finagle myself into this group <laughs> you know but i did and uh it was a great experience everybody welcomed me with open arms they knew i was as a you know uh i was a younger younger guy out there and so they you know, I learned a lot of a lot of things and, and got some really great friendships out of that trip. And so that was one of those pinch me moments. And uh, uh, so then that when you have those moments, then you then it really lights those fires, uh, fire in your belly, and then you can you know keep pushing forward. And then all of a sudden another moment's going to come along. So that was a big one there. Yeah, those those are some pretty some pretty big names, Larry. Yeah. 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 You know, I I you know you, again that's that's the really cool part and you you learn a lot of things from that and and you know new wedge design new thoughts how you you know and you, you might modify what what you do based on that and you know and that's how your product gets better and that you know and ultimately the better your product gets the better it is for the consumer the better it is for the end user uh, you know they're they're the the end user is really the one who is the the benefactor of of you know, JP's hard work, mm-hmm. my hard work, um, and, you know, and that's that's what makes it really cool. Yeah, and you know, we touched on JP, kind of the aesthetics earlier, and obviously there's there's so much going on in your wedges, um, not only kind of on the outside that, that everybody sees, but also kind of under the hood. Um, it actually, they, in a way, they sort of remind me, um, it, it's, it's a bit of a stretch of a comparison, but in a way, they kind of remind me of Air Jordan shoes, in that, you know, there's, there's such a, a definitive um, exterior, but there's so much technology, and what kind of really sparked the analogy in my head is it seems like there's kind of there's two kind of Air Jordan buyers. There's the one who who, who buy it and they treasure it, but they sort of keep it on their shelf as 
um, as kind of almost wall art, and then there's the people that, that play with them. I'm curious, you know, with your club, it's, it, it's always kind of a fine line between uh, the kind of that tool versus jewel tug of war. Do you kind of, there's, there's, I feel like there's almost two kinds of JP buyers. There's someone who sees it and it's, it's this beautiful work of art that they want to keep in their office or on their wall, and then there's the one that wants to get it out on the course immediately and start hitting bunker shots. Do you, how do you kind of view that tug of war between potential JP buyers and kind of where do you prefer to see uh, your works of art out in the world? Well, I think that everybody has their own unique tastes and their own uh, ways of doing doing things. And some people, um, you know, may want to keep them on their wall, let's say, and some, may, you know, want to want to dig them in the dirt. And I think that's I think both is great as long as the person, the client, is uh, that's purchasing and is getting the enjoyment they they want and and they intend to get out of the product. Um, I always love to to get the performance feedback of the, of the wedges um, because at the at the beginning of the day it's performance first they they're been made to help you play better golf um, and so that's that's the number one priority um, but again as an artist I really like to to make them look as as unique um, and timeless as possible so with that you know there definitely is some kind of interest on, on that art collectability side, which I think is great too. So, you know, I'm, you know, I'm humbled that people would want to put them on their wall <laughs> um, and also the comparison with Air Jordan. So um, uh, I think however you use them, it's, it's just fine by me. Yeah, JP, I think that's, that's just a really great perspective. And I think that that kind of balanced approach really, really speaks to many different kinds of consumers. Um, kind of jumping back to kind of your career timeline, I think it's so interesting that you began your career literally, if I have this right, in, in a, a shed in the Midwest, and you kind of accelerated, uh, ascended, ascended it to a point where you began working with Titleist, and then now you've gotten it back to the point where since 2018, you've kind of branched off and, and sort of gotten back in the garage. Obviously, the garage is uh, a bit more tricked out and a little more uh, sophisticated than when you originally started, but kind of how do you, what's the value of having just total independence um, in such a creative field uh, like golf club design? Yeah, well, it's important. It is really important to, one, to be able to uh, maintain your passion and then, you know, follow your instincts too. As an artist, you wanna, if you, you just really feel buzzing about something inside, you wanna be able to create it um, and not have, let's say people say, oh, don't, you can't do this because of that or this. You know, being that having that independence um, helps push the envelope um, and create something special. Uh, a lot of times, as in contrast, if you're in a in a in a setting where uh, maybe your your passion gets limited and things like that, so having that that independence to create what you want and follow your instincts of what what got you here, I think is important. I, and personally, that's that's an important thing for me. Yeah, you know, it's. Uh... Since you know, I spent a lot of time with Titleist too. I mean, the reaction, the reaction time to bringing something to market is is, is so much slower. I mean, if you know, if, if JP comes up with an idea for for a new wedge or a different bounce or whatever, I mean, he can go out and make some prototypes and get some people playing, and all of a sudden, you know, bring it out quickly. Where hey, you don't, you're not constrained by well, hey, you know, where does this fit in the sales and marketing plan, and how many do we have to make, and all that. You know, we, we've both been down that road. We, we know that. And, um, you know, it just, it just makes it that much easier. And, and again, the, 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 the ultimate, the consumer becomes the benefactor of right. that. You know, it's kind of like, you know, when, when Simon asked me to make some putters. Well, hey, I, I'm going to make a putter. You know, I'm not worried about selling 10,000 of them. You know, and we're, we're making a limited edition. And... Let's bring it out and see how it does. If you make some modifications, you make some modifications. But I think that's the whole cool thing about handmade yeah, sticks is, is the ability to keep turning over this new product and trying some different things. You know, and, and the ultimate goal is not that, hey, this, this has to go in line. You know, the sales and marketing plan is that we got to make 20,000 of these and we need to sell 20,000. Hey, you know, you, you sell 10, you sell 12, you sell 20, 30. You know, to me, that's the really cool part about mm -hmm. handmade sticks. And, you know, if you go on there and you can really find some stuff, I mean, if you think about it now, I mean, you can get a really cool bag of golf clubs going on with a lot of handmade stick, sticks golf clubs. And 
you know, it's the best of the best. I mean, that's the bottom line. And, you know, that's why, that's why we're sitting here talking to JP, because he's, he's one of the best. Absolutely. I, uh, I couldn't agree more. I think that's one of the cool parts of Handmade Sticks is it kind of marries that uh, allowing, uh, you know, visionaries like JP the freedom to, to kind of explore different ideas while also still um, kind of providing that support however we can. Um, with that kind of JP, we want to we want to let you out of here with one more question. When I ask you where you see JP Golf in, in three to five years, kind of what, what springs into your head? What's kind of on the horizon for JP? Well, you know, now that the the JP Premier line is up and launched, and we're we're getting through uh, those type of things. It's it's allowing me to get back in the in the shop space and the creative space from some R and D stuff, but also some really unique artistic show pieces as well. Um, so it's it's gonna it's allowing me now here in the next uh, this next time frame to get back in the shop, create some new product, whether that's an extension um, of the wedges uh, and a new line that way. Um, as well as the other um, golf equipment that could be in play from from irons to putters. Um, you know, you just don't know how how it goes, but once you get in that shop and I have a few ideas, I'm looking forward to doing a little R&D and bringing, bringing something new out there, but also enhancing on the product that's there with some really unique engravings and, and paying, you know, going back to my roots, what can I add from, you know, uh, my roots to the new product um, and keep those twists, keep it fresh and, and keep some cool stuff coming. Well, we can't wait to see what's coming from you, JP. Um, all the best to you as you kind of get back in the shop and, uh, and design out uh, kind of the JP wedges of the future. Uh, with that, we encourage all of you at home to check out the link in the description below to shop uh, the newest JP wedges along with other Handmade Sticks products. JP, we thank you for your time. Have a great rest of your day. You got it, guys. Thank you. All right. You take care. care.